Elizabeth Santorum. I went to the University of Dallas and I was a history major. When my sister Bella was born six years ago, um, I was six, 17 years old, I believe. And I can tell you, you know, everyone in our family was really in shock and you go through a grieving period. You know, Bella was diagnosed with what they considered was a lethal diagnosis, trisomy 18. 99% of children with her condition don't make it to birth. The majority of the reason why is because they're aborted. And then of that 1%, 90% don't make it to their first birthday. With those sort of statistics ringing in our ears, you know, we were you know, kind of cast into what we really see as like these depths of despair, just hopelessness. And, you know, we said, you know, our, our Lord, like you love us so, like why would you do this, right? You know, how could this be love? My dear mom, you know, just like a mother's heart, just like bled, right? You know, as, as you know, our sweet Bella was in the NICU, born, you know, three pounds, 11 ounces, and she was so beautiful, so beautiful, and we loved her so much. Um, and that's something we always emphasize with people that, we, you know, we, we, I've loved all my siblings, my parents have loved all of us from the moment they knew we were there, right? Um, and so when she was born, they said, you know, just, just let her go, just be at peace. And we said, you know, no, we're going, you know, we're going to fight for her just like we would fight for any of our other, you know, siblings or children, right? Um, and thanks be to God they did because Bella is six now, uh, going on seven. And, you know, she's a miracle to, you know, to us. The medical community will call her a statistical anomaly, but to us, you know, it's, it's such evidence of the hand of God. We need to be more on the, you know, on the front lines of this, this issue of the pro-life debate, you know, really pro-woman debate, right? If you hear statistics like that and you're a young woman and you're scared and you're considering whether or not to have a child, you know, it, they're going to push for you to make a choice, right? And often that leads to abortion, you know, especially with, you know, if you don't believe your child is going to even survive birth. It, it, during the campaign, it, it was almost a painful moment when Bella um, was sick in the hospital when my dad ran for president. And we had to almost make a decision at that moment because we've always really guarded Bella's privacy um, about whether or not to tell her story, to share her story. And we did. Um, we told you know people because we had to explain why my dad had uh, you know canceled these you know big campaign rallies and that our family had all flown back from all corners of the country to you know be together. And I can't tell you the outpouring of encouragement and support. And all of a sudden, trisomy 18, you know, which you've probably never even heard about, right, was on national news. And I can tell you that even now, I mean, when I go places or do interviews, it's often the first question people will ask me is, how's Bella? One of my favorite stories with my father is he was uh, driving a taxi cab back from Union Station and I, this man, I believe he was from Nigeria, you know, and didn't know much about politics, but he asked my dad about Bella, you know, he remembered, right? So this little girl who at the time was four, you know, had such an impact, you know, more so, you know, than anything we could have planned. It was completely like our Lord, you know, just directing her life and putting it into a spotlight, I think, to glorify his daughter, right? And to say that, you know, though she's what the world will call disabled, that she is so precious and so valuable. For that reason, we kind of began talking about her story and people asked, and so we, we, wanted, to, we wanted to share it with, you know, with more people. Um, it's not the first time my parents have shared something quite so personal. My mom wrote a book before called Letters to Gabriel. Um, this was written in the 1990s um, about my little brother who passed away shortly after he was born. Um, it's actually just a series of letters she had written to him during um, you know, his time in utero about how much she loved him. And she did this with all of us, which I think is pretty neat. Um, you know, I, I love you, you kicked today, or you know, we were listening to music today, I can't wait you know, to hold you. And you know, it's, it's beautiful for us, but with him it ended up you know, having a kind of more you know, powerful meaning in the end of it all. But, um, I can't tell you know how many you know women that book has helped because you know miscarriages are often you know just a source of incredible grief to you know to a woman and often to a couple. So um, they shared that story and you know with incredible you know ripples effects. Um, and we're hoping that Bella's gift will do the same. You know, ultimately, our dignity lies in the love of God the Father, 
you know, a short answer, right? Mm -hmm. That, you know, when we look on the cover of magazines, we see you're right, that it's outward appearance, it's, you know, what we do or what we say or how we look. And Bella reminds us of the dignity of all women, that she is valuable not by any measure that man can apply to her, but by the mere fact that God created her in his image and likeness and loves her infinitely. I, I think I doubted how much our Lord loved me and and my family in those moments. You know, I was young, I was in, you know, finishing up high school and, you know, what for most seniors, Bella, you know, has was very immunocompromised for her first few years and spent many months in the hospital. It was very difficult, you know, for my family. And I, you know, really wrestled with our Lord, you know, I think in those months. And and it was a kind of a moment of um, spiritual renewal for me ultimately, but um, during that time it was a lot of darkness. And, you know, I, I remember during that time feeling, you know, isolation from our Lord and um, not a lot of dignity, yeah. right? But, you know, if something is dignified, it has value, and to have value, it needs to be loved, right? So I would say that during that time, I, I, that's probably the time of my life I think I struggled the most. moments when we feel withdrawn or that our Lord has kind of removed his stock from you know our world that it makes us appreciate all the more you know when we're in you know these peaks with our Lord as opposed to in the valleys so that time of I think maybe you know I wouldn't call it spiritual desolation but something cl closely akin to it for a while you know um, really helped us to grow I think ultimately and you know I think I really do thank the Lord for that now looking back. Mm -hmm.